PTO provides us is the set home. Why do we need to set home or what is set home model? We need it with the set home model can be used in two ways. If we're using absolute movement, we want to, to set the zero point of the movement. And all the all the, the points and positions that we set from then on will be related related to the to the home, to the zero point of the movement. Then, after we set the zero point, we can tell the motor to get to uh, position 100 or position uh, 1000, and it will and it will know where to go uh, related to this uh, zero point. If we're using a relative movement, zero when we when we set the point home as home, we're actually we're telling the counter that. The, to count from zero. What it means that if we set a target of a thousand and we set the, the, the home at the same time, the movement will reach a thousand pulses and will stop. But this is, the, but this is only for, uh, for, our to, for us to monitor the movement. It has no it has no um, relative um, relevance to the to the control. How do we use the PTO set home? We first choose the channel. Then we choose the offset. What does it mean to choose the offset? For certain applications, we don't want to to set the zero point, but we want to to set let's say the hundred point. Okay, if the if the motor is at the moment at a certain point, and we want to say that from this point, a hundred pulses away, that will be the home point. So that's what we need the offset for. Again, we have the status and success bit to provide information about the, this model. I will now start to demonstrate how to use the PTO models in VisiLogic itself. Let's start a new application. And as we said, we need to choose the correct PLC, which contains the, PLC, the PTO uh, functionality. Now, I want to emphasize that we don't use or don't configure anything in the hardware. Configuring uh, something in the, hundred, in the hardware configuration uh, window, it will be ran over by the, the, the model, the ladder models that we will uh, create later. So when we're using the new PTO mo models, there's no need and it's actually forbidden to configure anything in this uh, hardware configuration window. We only choose the correct uh, PLC. After we chose the PLC, the first thing we need to do after we chose the PLC, the first thing that we'll do is to configure the channel. Configuring the channel is done only once, it is performed once, so I will choose the power a bit as the condition. Now, the PTO is under utils, and I will choose the configuration model. 
here is the window that, that we saw earlier. I need to choose which model I'm using. This is the one I have. And I need to uh, decide which channels I'm using and with which combination. Since I only want to demonstrate the PTO functionality, I will choose only pulse and direction. Pulse and direction requires two outputs. As we've seen before in the, in the combination table. Now I have, what do we have here? If you remember, if you recall, I said before that the, uh, one of the advantages of the, P, of the new PTO is that it, it can work with engineering units and not only with pulses. This is where we, um, config, con we configure the engineering movements um, in, uh, according to the pulses that the PTO provides. Okay? If, let's say, we know that one meter requires 100 pulses and we want to work with meters, then we will choose one meter here. We will choose a, a memory integer which will contain this information. And we will say we will choose another memory integer which will contain the value 100. And in this case, in this uh, way, we are set, we are we are setting we are deciding how to work with the PTO. For the example, I will choose two operands, and let's decide already. to work with a, with a very simple example that the ratio will be 1 over 1 just to make it more simple I need to choose two operands for the status message and for the success piece This is how you configure the PTO, the PTO channel. Let's connect it and move on. The second thing we need to do is to set the profile. I chose the module of the uh, PTO set profile and then I have to choose the values. First of all, I need to, cho to choose the channel. Since I uh, chose before channel 0, I will also choose it now. Second input I need to enter is the stop, start and stop velocity. I, as I told you before, the start stop velocity is something that you get from the datasheet of the motor. It is something that is uh, related to the, to the device itself and not directly to the PLC. Let's decide of uh, an arbitrary value. I will choose 100. Now, the maximum velocity. Again, as we said before, it is something that is related to the motor and the functionality of our, uh, of our project. The maximum velocity, I will, for that I will choose uh, an operand which I, which I will be able to change later. Acceleration time. This is the time here is in milliseconds. So let's let's choose a, uh, an arbitrary value and the same value for the deceleration time. Now the jerk factor. 
Again, between um, 1 and 16, we have 16 levels of jerk. Let's choose a jerk factor. And operands for status and success bit. Again, I need to create a condition. Let's call it Let's call it uh, set profile condition. And I will also create another condition for this, uh, for this uh, model because maybe I will want to change it later. But in not only in the on the power of it. Oh, right. So this I will make a positive transition and I will also use the power up bit. After we configured the PTO channel and we set the profile for the movement the next thing we want we will want to do is to create the actual movement again we have a we have the model for that the PTO model the PTO move I will place it somewhere in the in the next net we would have to choose the the channel number the type of the movement for our uh, demonstration, I will choose relative movement. Uh, I, I again, I I will um, use the a cert, uh, an operand for the velocity because, as we said, we can choose a different velocity for each move. Each time we call this model, we call this function, from the letter, the, the PTO will create the movement, the same movement uh, as we are creating now. Now, after we, after we chose the velocity, we will also want to choose the target position. How, one, how much movement, how long would the movement be? Again, I will choose a, an operand for this and an operand for status and success bit. Now I, uh, I set the movement and I need to create a condition for that. I will choose this memory bit. I will call it move. And I will connect it later to a button on the PLC. Um, for in order to create a movement, what we've just done should be enough. But if we want to also stop the movement in the middle of the profile, we will need to use another model called stop. Again, I'm choosing the channel, the um, appropriate ch channel, and now I have two uh, two options to stop. I I uh, either have the normal stop, which is uh, which the normal stop uses the va 